Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel MLG Super Guide. In this video, I am going to discuss most important multiple choice questions in hematology. It is very useful for HAAS, DHA, MOH, Prometric, PSC, and various competitive exams for medical laboratory technologist and lab technician. If you are a new year of my channel, please go through my previous videos. If you like this video, please subscribe and share. Let's move on to the video. First question. The osmotic regenerative test result in a patient with thalassemia major would most likely be normal, decreased, increased, decreased after incubation at 37 degrees Celsius. Right answer is option B, decreased. The osmotic regenerative test is decreased in thalassemia major patients. And why it is decreased? As we know, numerous target cells are present in thalassemia major patients. Because of these target cells, they have increased surface volume. As a result, the osmotic fragility is decreased. Next question. All of the following are characteristic findings in a patient with iron deficiency anemia except microcytic hypochromic red cell morphology, elevated platelet count along with small platelets, Decreased total ion binding capacity, increased RBC protoporphyrin. Here the right answer is option C. Decreased total ion binding capacity. And it is why there is an increase in total ion binding capacity and in RBC protoporphyrin because of a decreased level of iron in iron deficiency anemia. Morphological characteristics of iron deficiency anemia include a microcytic hypochromic blood picture. Platelets are usually small and increased in number. Next question. The macrocytes typically seen in megaloblastic processes are ovalocytic, pencil shaped, teardrop shaped, crescent shaped. Here the right answer is option A. Ovalocytic. The macrocytes typically seen in megaloblastic anemia is ovalocytic. Macrocytes in true megaloblastic conditions are oval macrocytes as opposed to the round macrocytes that are usually seen in alcoholism and obstructive liver diseases. So here the right answer is option A. The macrocytes typically seen in megaloblastic processes are ovalocytic. Next question. Which of the following are most characteristic of the red cell indices associated with megaloblastic anemias? Here we have four options. Option A, MCV 99FL, MCH 28PG, MCHC 31%. Option B, MCV 62FL, MCH 27PG, MCHC 30%. Option C, MCV 125FL, MCH 36PG, MCHC 34%. And option D, MCV 78FL, MCH 23PG, MCHC 30%. Here the right answer is option C in which MCV is 125FL, MCH 36PG, MCHC 34%. Here, the red cell indices in a patient with megaloblastic anemia are macrocytic and normochromic in nature. The macrocytosis is prominent with an MCV ranging from 100 to 130 FL. So, we are here we have option C in which MCV is 125 FL. So, right answer is option C. Next question. Which of the following may be seen in the peripheral blood smear of a patient with obstructive liver disease? Schistocytes, macrocytes, microcytes, Howell Jolie bodies. Right answer is option B, macrocytes. And why the red cells are macrocytic in nature in obstructive liver disease? This is because patient with obstructive liver disease may have red blood cells that have an increased tendency towards the deposition of lipid on the surface of the red cell. As a result, the red cells are larger or more macrocytic in nature than normal red cells. This is the reason why red blood cells are macrocytic in nature in obstructive liver disease. There is an increased deposition of lipid on the surface of red blood cells. Next question. 
Which of the following is an unusual complication that may occur in infectious mononucleosis? Option A. Splenic infractions, dactylitis, hemolytic anemia, giant platelets. Here the right answer is option C. Hemolytic anemia. And why the answer is hemolytic anemia? Occasionally patient with infectious mononucleosis develop a potent cold agglutinin with anti-I specifically. This cold autoantibody can cause strong hemolysis and a hemolytic anemia. This is the reason why the hemolytic anemia is an unusual complication in infectious mononucleosis. Next question. Which inclusions may be seen in leukocytes? Dolibodies, basophilic stippling, malarial parasites, Howell Jolly bodies. Right answer is option A. Dolly bodies. Dolly bodies are RNA rich areas within polymorphonuclear neutrophils that are oval and light blue in color. Although often associated with infectious states, they are seen in a wide range of conditions and toxic reactions including hemolytic and pernicious anemias, chronic granulocytic leukemia and therapy with antineoplastic drugs. The other inclusions are associated with erythrocytes. So here the right answer is option A. Inclusions which seen in leukocyte is Dolly bodies and other options are usually seen in RBCs. Next question. A myeloid erythroid ratio of 10 is to 1 is most often seen in option A thalassemia, option B leukemia, option C polycythemia vera, option D none. Here the right answer is option B leukemia. Next question. Which of the following cells is considered pathognomonic for Hodgkin disease? Neiman pig cells, reactive lymphocytes, flame cells, Reed Sternberg cells. Right answer is option D. Reed Sternberg cells. And what is Reed Sternberg cells? The morphological common denominator in Hodgkin lymphoma is the Reed Sternberg cell. It is a large binucleated cell with a dense nucleus surrounded by clear space. These characteristics give the Reed Sternberg cells an owl's eye appearance. And the option Neiman pig cells. These are histocytes containing phagocytized sphingolipids and that stain pale blue. And flame cells, these are plasma cells with distinct red cytoplasm. They are sometimes seen in the bone marrow of patient with multiple myeloma. So here the right answer is option D. Pathognomonic cells for Hodgkin disease is Reed Sternberg cells. Tenth question. In myelofibrosis, the characteristic abnormal red blood cell morphology is that of target cells, schistocytes, teardrop cells, ovalocytes. Right answer is option C, teardrop cells. The marked amount of fibrosis, both medullary and extramedullary accounts for the irreversible red cell morphological change to a teardrop shape. The red cells are teared as they attempt to pass through the fibrotic tissue. That's why teardrop cells. In myelofibrosis, the characteristic abnormal red cell morphology is because of teardrop cells. Next question. Multiple myeloma is most difficult to distinguish from chronic lymphocytic leukemia, acute myelogenous leukemia, benign monoclonal gamma padi, benign adenoma. Right answer is option C, benign monoclonal gamopathy. Here the right answer is option C. And why it is C? Benign monoclonal gamopathies have peripheral blood findings similar to those in myeloma. However, a lower concentration of monoclonal protein is usually seen and there are no osteolytic lesions and the plasma cells comprise less than 10% of the nucleated cells in the bone marrow. About 30% become malignant and therefore the term monoclonal gamopathy of undetermined significance is a designation used to describe this condition. Next question. Which ratio of anticoagulant to blood is correct for coagulation procedures? 1 is to 4, 1 is to 5, 1 is to 9, 1 is to 10. Right answer is option C. 1 is to 9. The optimum ratio of anticoagulant to blood is 1 part of anticoagulant to 9 parts of blood. 
the anticoagulant supplied in this amount is sufficient to bind all available calcium thereby preventing clotting so for coagulation studies the ratio is 1 is to 9 next question what reagents are used in the prothrombin time test thromboplastin and sodium chloride thromboplastin and potassium chloride thromboplastin and calcium actin and calcium chloride here the right answer is option c thromboplastin and calcium next question which test would be abnormal in a patient with steward proud factor or factor 10 deficiency option a pt option b aptt c pt and aptt d thrombin time here the right answer is option c pt and aptt steward proud factor or factor 10 is involved in the common pathway of the coagulation cascade therefore its deficiency prolongs both pt and aptt next question the anticoagulant of choice for most routine coagulation studies is sodium oxalate sodium citrate heparin edta right answer is option b sodium citrate the anticoagulant of choice for most coagulation procedures is sodium citrate because the factor 5 and 8 are more labile in sodium oxalate and in heparin which neutralizes thrombin EDTA which inhibit thrombin action on fibrinogen. So these anticoagulants are not used for routine coagulation studies and the anticoagulant of choice for most routine coagulation studies is sodium citrate. Right answer is option B, sodium citrate.